Will Liza Donnelly please join me at the podium? A trailblazer in the world of cartooning, Liza Donnelly routinely turns the headlines of the day into digestible and humorous drawings, highlighting what's ridiculous and poignant about daily news and our daily lives. Donnelly discovered her love for drawing, as well as her talent for it, as a little girl. She studied art at Earlham College in Indiana and then began a very full career. Since 1979, her cartoons have appeared in the prestigious magazine, The New Yorker. She joined their staff in 1982. At that time, she was the youngest and one of only three women cartoonists who worked at the magazine. They continue to publish her work today. She is also a cartoonist for The New Yorker magazine and Women's E! News. She writes for Forbes.com. Her cartoons have appeared in numerous other respected publications and media outlets, including The New York Times, Harvard Business Review, Glamour Magazine, Cosmopolitan Magazine, Scholastic News, CNN.com, Daily Beast, and The Huffington Post. She's also penned several cartoon books, including one, When Do They Serve the Wine? The Folly, Flexibility, and Fun of Being a Woman. Two, Funny Ladies, The New Yorker's Greatest Women Cartoonist and Their Cartoons. And three, Sex and Sensibility. Ten women examine the lunacy of modern love in 200 cartoons. She and her cartoonist husband, Michael Maslin, co-wrote the book Cartoon Marriage, Adventures in Love and Matrimony with the New Yorker's cartooning couple. For Scholastic Incorporated, she wrote and illustrated seven children's books. But Donnelly doesn't just stick to print. She is a sought-after public speaker, including on the topic of women and humor. She's given several TED Talks, campus talks, and lectures for the Museum of Cartoon and Comic Art, the Norman Rockwell Museum, and the American Association of Editorial Cartoonists. And she has added a more recent achievement of becoming a columnist for Forbes.com. In 2007, Donnelly joined an inspiring international initiative called Cartooning for Peace. She and the other cartoonists spoke at the United Nations and, with accompanying exhibitions, they have traveled the world speaking to groups on topics like freedom of speech, global issues, and cartooning and peace. Donnelly is the founder and editor of World Inc., a site of cartoons from contributors around the globe. She's a founding member of the Cartoonist Association, and she teaches women's studies at Vassar College in New York. Liza Donnelly, you are someone I would call a game changer. You have changed the world for the better <laughs> using humor. I admire you so much for that. It is with appreciation, appreciation, and immense esteem that the National Conference for College Women Student Leaders, Organizers, and Attendees, including myself, honor and recognize her this evening as a 2012 Woman of Distinction. My heart is racing. <laughs> I want to thank, um, I mean, I met so many wonderful women already tonight and um, who work for the organizations that are supporting this, 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 uh, this evening. Um, the the uh, American Association of University, University Women um, and NASPA and um, Nick Whistle, which is something I just learned tonight, is the, how you say the acronym. Um, thank you so much for this. I'm, I'm honored, deeply honored to, to get this, um, this honor this, uh, this award with these, these women, these fellow awardees. They're, they're incredible women, and I'm, I'm honored to be among them. Um, usually when I'm, I'm brought in to talk, I'm, I'm supposed to provide comic relief, uh, uh, and, I, and I try to do my best, but usually I have my cartoons with me. I have a big screen back there to provide the humor, because I love making people laugh, and that's, that's what I, I know how to do is, is cartoon. Uh, for laughter, but I'll have to survive without them. Um, but I do want to talk about something that um, I have drawn about. It's something that's not particularly visible, and it's not something that you can put on a resume. Now you think, well, what, what is a cartoonist doing with a resume? It's, it's true, but I have one. I do have a resume. And it was really, I remember my first one was really hard to, to write. Like, what do you put on there? You, do you put that, that semester you went and built a yurt in Maine? Do you, do you put grilling hamburgers at the, at the 
at the student cafe. Do you put that on there? Um, it's all really hard. But getting into the New Yorker and publishing books were big hurdles for me, and I'm very proud of those things. Um, and they were very challenging. But the one hurdle that perhaps was the most difficult and not as visible is the one I think that many of you may understand and recognize as something that you feel that you want to overcome. And that thing is fear. Not, not the classic fear of failure. I'm talking about a type of fear that is more typical of women. Fear of being wrong. I used to call, I used to call it being shy. I was very shy as a young girl. But that's vague, that's a vague word and it's kind of a cop out, I think. It's being afraid of, uh, of, of not following the rules, of not doing the right thing, fear of, of offending people. You know, it's a desire to always make nice, always be sweet, always be thoughtful. Now, of course, these things are important to be from time to time. But sometimes, as a woman, we take it too far. Now, the other day, I was trying to think of what I was going to talk to you about. And I, and I remembered a, 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 an anecdote in my, in my family that's, passed, that's been told over the years. Um, and I thought it might illustrate what I'm talking about. My sister, who's two years older than I am, was something of a rebel. And to describe this, my parents always said that when she took piano lessons at an early age, it didn't work out because she got into an argument with the teacher about where middle C was. <laughs> OK, now, we all know a piano has a middle C. It's not really arguable where that is. But and, uh, the notion that my sister would even argue with the teacher was outrageous to everyone. And I picked up on that as a little girl. Don't challenge authority. It gets you into trouble, because my sister did get into a lot of trouble for a lot of different things, not just that. As I look back on this, as difficult as she was for everyone around her, I admire her spunk. Back then, this is in the 60s, little girls were not supposed to have spunk. We we're supposed to be agreeable. And I think some of that is still quite true. This is one reason why more women aren't humorists. In order to do comedy, you have to take chances and have confidence. Any fear in there, and it's kind of ruined. I went into cartooning because I love to make people laugh, but I, but I did not want to do it in person, and I found a way to do it. I found a, my drawing to make people laugh. You see, humor relies on the rules of a culture. It takes what we know and it twists it. It takes what we know and creates the unexpected. That's why we laugh, like arguing middle C. It's funny, it's outrageous, it's unexpected, particularly from a girl. That's why I think if we use humor, it will have great, great impact. We can use humor to challenge the rules and ultimately change them. And it's important not to only laugh at the stupid things that are in our culture, but to laugh at ourselves. It's one of the great ways to grow. Laugh at your mistakes and then go out and make more. I made plenty of mistakes that never saw the light of day. I took risks on paper in the solitude of my studio. And some of those risks my editor saw, and he must really think I'm crazy, but that's, you know, that's okay. What I regret is that at an early age, I did not take risks in public. I urge you to do so, and don't wait until you're 40 like I did. Take them now and believe in yourself when you take those risks. Find your inner spunk. So I have a couple of rules for you. <laughs> don't follow rules. <laughs> the ones I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Don't give up. Find and then listen to your voice. Speak up and use the voice that you've found. When I was your age, I wanted to change the world. As it turns out, at the time, I didn't. <laughs> but what I discovered is that if you hold on to that feeling and take it one step at a time, eventually, you just might. Thank you. <laughs>